All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Well, thank you again for joining us for the Finding a Summer Psychology Internship Workshop. My name is Steve, Steve Young. I'm an advisor here in the psychology department and I am the unofficial internship coordinator for psychology. I also teach the internship course for students that are earning academic credit for their professionally supervised internship. So thank you again for joining us today. We want to hop right into it. So some of our learning outcomes for today, we're hoping that this session will allow you to become familiar with some of the internship search resources that are available to psychology majors here at UMD. We want to also kind of emphasize the importance of creating your own internship that yes, that is definitely an option for you to do. Thirdly, we want to look at how to conduct outreach to potential internship sites. So what does that look like? How do I compose an email to a prospective organization? And then finally, the earning credit aspect, how to earn a letter grade and credit for your experience. Oftentimes, psychology majors as you know, psychology is a really broad field. So sometimes psychology majors are really not sure what qualifies as an internship, what really defines a psychology internship. And we gave you this slide here to kind of see, give you some sense for some of the component, typical components of a psychology internship. Number one, it typically involves behavior of some sort, whether you're observing behavior, you're managing behavior, you're in, uh, engaging in behavior modification, whatever it might be, it usually has some kind of behavioral aspect to it. The second one there is because psychology majors often are working in say the nonprofit sector, a lot of internships in psychology are focusing on helping to improve the quality of life of others. So it might be working directly one-on-one -on -one with clients or in a group capacity of some sort. The third item you see there is more of the research base. So a lot of psychology internships have a data analysis or research component to them. It might be, say, doing research with Walter Reed or NIMH or NIH or a public policy or social science research firm like AIR in DC or Westat in Rockville. So bottom line is if you can say yes to any of those three very rather general or broad categories, it's a psychology internship. So there are really three I've been doing this 11 years now, and, and through my experience, I would say there are three categories of psychology internships. There are clinical internships, which you see there are practice-based. So that's going to be if you really are interested in, say, clinical psychology and working directly with a specific population. That might mean children, adolescents, adults, or it might mean a particular population with an emotional or mental health challenge to it. An example would be ABA therapy, working with children, say, on the autism spectrum. Research-based, I already talked a little bit about this, but research-based internships are pretty prevalent within the Baltimore and Washington, D.C. area because of where we're located. And then we have, finally, teaching-based. So teaching-based is going to be more an example would be the literacy lab, where maybe I'm engaging in tutoring. I'm helping to tutor underprivileged children. Uh, research based, we should point out, are going to be more hands off experiences typically. You may have some contact with clients or populations in a research setting. Typically, research based internships tend to be more project based. We're going to give you this quick kind of template here or overview of, of how broad psychology internships are. They kind of fall, in terms of the settings, they kind of fall within one of these settings that you see listed up here. So behavioral health systems, probably the largest in Maryland is Shepherd Pratt, which is located 
all throughout Maryland, but their main headquarters is up in Towson. Nonprofit organizations, school settings, educational settings. We have here uh, social science, neurobehavioral research. So if you're more, say, on the neuroscience side of things or you're interested in the brain sciences, that's probably for you. If you're thinking about industrial organizational psychology, we have a number of students that also intern within the business sector or industries within the DMV. Now, as you start to think about your internship search, it's important to ask yourself some questions before you even dive in at all. One of them is kind of what we already uh, were mentioning is, do you want more of a people-based type of internship or are you looking for something that is more project-based? The type of population you might wanna work with. Maybe say, you took adult psychopathology or you took child psychopathology. And in that course, you learned about a particular disorder. Maybe you have an interest in working with that particular disorder. The setting that you wanna work within, is it business? Is it school? Is it healthcare? Is it industry? Is it a nonprofit? Is it the federal government? Is it the state government? The nice, great thing about being a psychology major is it does lend itself to such broad settings within which to perform your internship. What are you looking to develop or how are you looking to develop from the experience? So that might be the knowledge you're looking to acquire, the skills you're looking to develop. You can think about how you wanna utilize your internship. Do you want to use this as a springboard, say, to a graduate school program or are you looking to use it for entry level or for say um, advancement into an entry level position within the clinical psychology field. You can also think about what your transportation needs are. If you're planning to do an internship within the DMV, the nice thing about that is it is pretty easy to get around here through public transportation, as you probably know with the Metro system and the transit system that we have. If you're planning to do an internship, say back home in New Jersey or New York, and you don't have a vehicle, uh, that I don't know as well about, but uh, most of New Jersey, most of New York are metropolitan areas as well. And can you fit it into your schedule? So even if you're planning to do in the summer, we're talking about your summer schedule. So you might have other obligations in the summer. You might have a family vacation planned or what have you. So you wanna think about, can I actually fit this internship into my summer schedule? If you're planning to do it, say in the fall, you wanna be thinking about, can I fit it into my academic schedule as well? So before you embark on your search, just a couple of things to be thinking about. You want to, number one, create an internship resume. I'll be providing you some links to some samples of that later in this session. But if you want some really great examples of internship resumes, go to careers.umd.edu and click on launch your career. Actually, I think they might have, uh, might have updated their website a little bit. But at any rate, you'll find some really good resume samples on there. You wanna think about the internship's mission and your mission. So what's your vision for yourself? Uh, what do you hope to gain from the experience? What's your mission? What are your values, your goals, your interests related to doing the internship in the first place? You may want to review previous psych internships. So we have, a directory that, I'll, that I will uh, talk a little bit more about later of internship organizations. So you might wanna just first off, get familiar with just how versatile and diverse the settings are and the experiences themselves are for psychology majors. And then thinking about how, again, it fits into your scheduling needs, how the internship will be fitting in to your scheduling needs. As you think about your resume, we'll just give you some quick tips here for your internship resume. You don't wanna undersell by any means. Sometimes when I'm working with a student to help them create their internship resume, they'll say things like, well, I haven't done much or nothing I've done really relates. And so it's as if they're not validating their experiences. You want to be validating your experiences. And I part of my job is to help you realize how does 
an experience you had outside of the classroom or even inside the classroom relate or align with the internship or the organization that you might be interested in interning with. Uh, your education credentials, you want to, uh, even if you're a first year student, you can put Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, anticipated graduation date, May of 2025, or whatever date it might be, paid work experiences that you had. I will share with you when I was a college student many years ago, I worked at an amusement park both in high school and college. And you might say, well, that doesn't really relate to psychology, but I worked a lot with people. I got to understand the human condition a lot better, dealing with difficult patrons in the amusement park. That really related to my experience of getting an internship myself. Honors and awards that you have, leadership positions that you've held. And I always go by the theory of relevance. And so if it was something back in high school, that's perfectly fine if it's relevant to uh, securing the internship. We don't want to, again, uh, undersell you in any way. And then any specialized skills. A lot of students I work with are bilingual or sometimes even trilingual. They might have technical skills that are important for a potential internship organization to know about. So again, we want to, on your internship resume, be making sure that we are speaking directly to the opportunity that you're seeking, that being, an in, that being of course, an internship. By the way, you can put questions in the chat, although it's just kind of me tonight, so I might not be able to get to answering those towards the end, but you are welcome to uh, put some questions in the chat and we'll try to address them at the end of today's session. So um, developing your mission and, and vision statement, I think it's important for you to really focus on topics or themes in psychology that really resonate with you. So again, you might've taken a class and for me, it was my learning and memory class in college where I got to work with an actual Skinner box and I got to train my lab rat to press the Skinner box to get the pellet. That operant conditioning was something that was really, I was really passionate about. You can have the same for yourself. What are some actual themes, topics, theories, principles in psychology that really resonate with you? Uh, the skills that, again, that you're looking to acquire uh, through the experience and how your psychology coursework might be a benefit to the potential internship site. I don't think students think of that enough that you, even if you're a sophomore, you've probably taken maybe three or four psychology courses at this point, and you already do have a solid foundation in the human condition. You understand what makes people tick, or you might have taken a developmental psych course that is really getting you a better understanding of child development. So therefore, if you're applying for, say, to work with an ABA organization, that's going to be really a real strong selling point because ABA therapy is working the kids on, on the autism spectrum, usually up to about 12 or 13 years of age. And the values that you're looking to, uh, that are important to you in a work setting, you know, um, are you looking for more of a casual atmosphere? Are you looking for something formal? Um, those kinds of things. Now, you can do strategy number one, which is searching for actual advertised internships. And you might have already been doing this. Some of these sites here might look familiar to you, Careers for Terps. Idealist is our nonprofit internships. We have the USA Jobs, which is the Pathways Internship Program. So the Pathways Internship Program is a stepping stone then into what we call a general schedule full-time position with the federal government. We have the blog that you see here on the left-hand side of the page where we will post openly active internships. You wanna continue doing that. It's perfectly fine to be doing that. What I have found to be the more effective and successful strategy, because everyone is looking on Careers for Turf, everyone's looking on internships.com, is to design or create your own internship. And what we mean by that is really uh, some of the resources that I'm going to show you in about in a second, using those resources to design an internship that's going to allow you to do outreach to organizations. So you're going to do outreach to organizations you're interested in expressing an interest in their mission or a particular service or program that they might provide, 
kind of what we call the foot in the door technique is what we're meaning by this create your own internship experience. So we're going to skip to the resources here. We're going to talk about, uh, I think the most important thing today for you is, is introducing you to the resources for your internship search to kickstart your internship search and how to really utilize those resources. So again, we're talking about a get, getting a foot in the door approach. This internship resources poster you see at the link there, psych internship resources, go.umd.edu, psych, psych internship resources, um, has kind of everything in one place. So we had uh, one of our undergraduate program managers design this for us. And I think it is a really interesting tool to be using because we're gonna show you a lot of these tools today, not show you, but give you kind of a introduction to what they're all about and how you can use them for your internship search. But this is a really great starting resource for you as you begin your summer internship search. Another great starting resource I would suggest to you is our directory. So even if you're looking to do an internship, say back home in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, wherever, this directory can still get your wheels turning as to, hmm, maybe I could look for a behavioral health system back in New Jersey that's close to me to target for potential opportunities. So the directory, all of the organizations on this directory, students have completed the in, an internship for academic course credit. So everything on here, and this is data from, been here 11 years now. So this is data from the past 10 years, roughly speaking, of internship sites. So you wanna hop on here, it's simply psych internships. You see the link at the bottom there. Hop on here and start exploring. Take a moment, take five, 10 minutes and explore some of the headers that you see there. Um, they're kind of broken down into different types of internships again. We, we mentioned earlier, you know, clinical, teaching and research internships. Uh, they're broken down into that, but then also even further, we have uh, some, in sorry to see more students actually doing internships with private practices. So we have a section for that now on here. So again, this is a really great starting point for your search. Another resource I wanted to share with you, if you're not already connected with, as a University of Maryland student, you have access to what's called Terrapins Connect, which is the university's alumni mentoring platform. So you see here, I have kind of a visual of it. I would say to you, if you don't already have an account created on Terrapins Connect, that you go to Terrapins Connect, terrapinsconnect.umd.edu, create an account for yourself. It might take a day or so for it to get approved, but once it's approved, it's smooth sailing. You can go on there and network with with recent and long-term alumni. And why, that, why might that be helpful with your summer internship search? Well, we never know who might know of an opportunity. So let's say I'm interested in clinical psychology. I can go to the networking box up here and I can type in clinical psychology and it's going to give me all the alums that have that in their profile. So they might have it in their actual job title or they might have it in their profile. Regardless, I wanna use this resource because it's another way, again, to try to get my foot in the door. I can, once I get it set up, I can click on a profile. It's gonna give me the option to schedule an appointment with that alumnus. So you can look up their calendar, schedule an appointment with them. It's gonna give me the option to send them a introductory message. We even have some templates created for you on this system that you can use. Again, a really great resource. I recommend you use it. Uh, to be quite honest, you're paying for it um, through, your, through your tuition dollars, uh, through your fees uh, that you're paying as an undergraduate student, as a University of Maryland student. So I recommend um, using it for that reason alone. The next resource I wanted to introduce you to is the Feller Center. So the Feller Center for Advising and Career Planning is the new BSOS Advising Center. Not, I guess it's not so new anymore maybe a year or so now. And they have a really good listing on here of where are recent psychology graduates working? Where are they employed? What are their job titles? So again, this could be benefit, a benefit to you because 
if we know that that organization is already employing a University of Maryland psychology graduate, they're probably going to be very apt to also take maybe a student on as an intern. It also might give you an idea of some key words to play around with, which we'll get to in a second, as to how you can search for organizations. So for example, you may find on this list um, the title of rehabilitation counselor. So that might be, I might want to search, say, in indeed.com for rehabilitation counseling and see what organizations come up. And that those are going to be organizations that I may want to add to my list to target. We have also um, volunteermatch.org. Ideally, I'm sure everyone in this in this Zoom right now would love to have a paid internship. I would love to be able to say to you, all of the psychology internships are paid. The reality is that probably maybe one quarter of psychology internships are paid. Many of them are volunteer experiences. Hence the reason you might want to create an account on volunteermatch.org. I will share with you pre-COVID, I used this myself, and this is how I learned about the Smithsonian internship program on here and started volunteering with the Smithsonian. So you never know what you're going to find on here. Even when you go on here, you search, you see all the different causes there at the bottom. A lot of those causes, when you really look at them, have either indirect or direct relationships to psychology. So they have one thing in common, helping people, helping to improve the quality of life of others, like I was mentioning earlier. So this is another really great resource that I recommend you use for identifying actual opportunities. You're gonna have a really high response rate with this because all of the organizations that use Volunteer Match rely heavily on volunteers and they're going to really appreciate when someone responds uh, to them uh, on the site. It's free as well to, to create the site, to create the account, by the way. You probably have heard of Indeed.com. Indeed.com is basically a job board. So it consolidates all of these human resource job announcements into one place. So speaking of rehabilitation, it uh, looks like I might've been playing with this uh, concept earlier. You can go on indeed.com. This is really good for out of state folks who are looking to find an internship back home. You can play around with some key words related to psychology, like psychiatric re re rehabilitation that you see there in Washington, DC. And now we're getting job titles that are coming up. But well, we can be looking at those organizations there, the ACTA, the AL ALTA rather, healthcare services. I've never heard of them. It doesn't mean they're not a reputable organization. I might want to explore that organization a little bit further, add them to my list, add them to my list of organizations that I may want to target for potential opportunities. We also have here our list of keywords, you see the link at the top there, go.umd.edu slash psych internship keywords. So this is by no means an exhaustive list, but you can use this list to start searching for organizations that kind of match your mission. So again, thinking about the courses that you've taken and any themes, topics, concepts, theories, principles that you might be interested in, you can use these keywords to search potentially for organizations that you might be interested in interning with. We do have on the site page, I think we might've updated this uh, recently, but we do have a entire, all of these different links uh, to help again, jumpstart your search. Uh, we want to help you as much as possible. We realize that it's not easy sometimes to find experiential learning opportunities like internships, like research. So part of my job, a lot of my job is to help you with that. So you are not alone in this process. Um, I'm not, um, as I share these resources with you, I don't want you to think like, okay, he's giving us these resources. Now, what do we do? You know, I can, I can still help you further beyond this. This is kind of the tip of the iceberg, this workshop this evening, but we do have a lot of different 
sites or web links on on the site.umd.edu page that you can go to that are there also to help you in finding an internship. Now, in the Psych 39 class, students are asked to do a poster on their experience, which provides a little bit more detail and specificity as to what did they do in the experience. So it might not be bad to actually look at some of those final projects from the class to see, hmm, Cornerstone Montgomery, okay, what did the person do in this experience? Oh, I see that they did, they had the opportunity to do a lot of group facilitation work. I see that they were also responsible for um, dis dispensing medications for the clients or the patients, you know, things like that. So it might help you again to be able to identify uh, organizations you might be interested in. So again, the directory is our list of organizations where students have done an academic credit internship. These posters directly relate to that. So you can go this go to this link and look at some past posters of some students to kind of see, get a little bit more detail as to what their internship was all about. You'll notice if you go to the directory that I showed, that I um, introduced you to earlier, the directory only has the name of the organization, the mission of the organization, a link to their website, and then a contact person. So it's not telling you what was really done in the internship. The mini posters will tell you more about what were the functions and responsibilities that the student performed in that internship. So how to organize your search. If you don't take anything away from, from our workshop tonight, I would recommend this next thing you take away. It's creating a spreadsheet to monitor and track your communications with organizations. So this spreadsheet might include a column that says name of organization. It might have a contact person. It might have a column for date. So saying on this date, I sent an email to so-and-so. The reason we wanna track our search is because your time is limited. So we wanna make sure that we're investing time wisely and not in say an organization that just simply is not responding at all. So let's say that I'm the student and I sent three emails to an organization over the course of three weeks. I sent one email a week and I've got a no response from that organization probably want to move on, we want to move on to some of our other organizations that are maybe at the top of our list. Speaking of top of your list, you want to rank your organizations from most important to least important. So which one are you really excited about interning at? And then which ones you say, mm, I'm willing to accept an internship with this organization, but it's not like the top of my list. The reason we want to do that is because we want to do outreach first to your top or most before or organizations to try to get them to bite first. And you wanna really, this is where students get it a little bit wrong, I feel, um, when I ask them, tell me why you're interested in organization X. And they can't really tell me. Um, it's important to really think deeply about why are you interested in working with Little Leaves? Uh, why are you interested in Shepherd Pratt? Why are you interested in the APA or NIH? What is it about that mission, their mission, or is it a specific, as you see there, a specific program, service, or maybe it's a population that they work with that you're really interested in that is kind of calling you to extend some outreach? So really thinking about that question, I think is important. So we're giving you here an example of a cold email to send to an internship site. We keep it really simple and I'm happy to help you with this. A lot of times students need help with this. No problem at all helping you with this. But we wanna keep it simple. We wanna say, dear Mr. So-and-so or Ms. So-and-so, um, my name is Steve. I'm a junior psychology major at the University of Maryland. I hope that you're doing really well and staying healthy and safe. We might then have a brief sentence or two, as you see in that third bullet there, kind of stating, I, I stumbled upon your organization on our internship site directory, and I'm really interested in service A that you provide to clients. 
I was wondering, um, would there be any opportunity to arrange a 20 to 30 minute Zoom meeting with you so that I can learn more about the services you provide and also share some ways that I might, or, or learn about some ways I might be able to contribute to your organization's mission. That is a really good example of an outreach email because you're not making it just about you, you're making it about them, you're showing some enthusiasm, you're showing, you're, you're stating the why of the organization. Why does the organization really match up with your needs and values? And typically, if you're going to send, say, five outreach emails out at once to five different organizations, and you use kind of that format that I just articulated, you're probably going to get at least one to bite because you're showing uh, some real authenticity. You're showing, again, some strong enthusiasm for the internship site and also some ambition by stating that you want to contribute to their mission. Here's how it would look kind of a, again, a sample email to a potential internship organization. So when I was talking earlier about the directory, we don't know if which of those organizations is looking for help for the summer. We don't know because that's simply a list of organizations where students have interned that some of which we've developed some really close partnerships with. So we might send an email to five organizations in that directory and we don't get a response. However, if we do send an email like this, like, like I was just mentioning earlier, where it's, we're not making it just about us. So you see in this email here, it's kind of what I was saying earlier, I'm who I am, where I'm from. I might, in this one, I'm talking about a course I took. I'm talking about clinical psychology. I learned uh, in that course a little bit about, say, psychiatric rehabilitation. I see that that's a strong part or a central theme to your mission at Cornerstone Montgomery. Would it be possible to meet with you to learn more about your organizations, programs, and services. And again, then I'm asking, I'm saying basically telling them you should be prepared that I'm also going to share some ways that I might contribute to your organization's mission. So you see here, we're not directly asking for an internship because sometimes, believe it or not, when an organization, when we do that with an organization, it can turn them off a little bit, but we're sort of asking for an internship without asking for it. We're still saying, hmm, yeah, I, I think I still could be a value to this organization. So I'm not going to send this email without putting a little blurb at the end that says, um, here are, you know, here's some things that I'm thinking about. Um, and then also attaching your resume. So um, we'll talk in a second. It's important to have either myself or the Career Center, the Feller Center. Or the, or the University Career Center, look at your resume before you send it out if you haven't already had it reviewed uh, and such. And then we have just um, a couple more examples here, just kind of, kind of reminds me of diagramming sentences in high school English, you know, kind of, you know, dissecting the, the email itself and, um, you know, how it will look when it's put together, that kind of thing in its, in its other removable parts. Yeah, and this, this sample cold email is really, I, I, I like to refer to this one as the intellectual curiosity email. So this student is, they're mentioning they took three classes, child developmental and multicultural psychology. And in those classes, um, they, they, that helped them get interested in learning more about this organization. So if you're, you know, a good example with this would be the treatment and learning centers in Rockville, which is um, exactly what it says. It's working with children who have social and emotional skills deficits. They could also be on the autism spectrum. They might have some cognitive deficits as well. But saying these things could be a draw to that organization because they're, that's a really good fit for a student interested in and in, in, for example, developmental psychology. So, um, you know, we, we have samples of these emails in that poster that I showed you earlier, that internship poster. So earning academic credit for the internship. So 
The course is called Psych 39 Experiential Learning. You can learn all about the course at the link at the bottom that you see there, go.umd.edu slash Psych 39. We have, I think, a course syllabus up there. You're getting a really biased perspective on this, but I think the course is really helpful for students to reflect upon, to process their internship experience, to also analyze and think critically about their internship experience. We cover topics like ethics, diversity. We talk about um, how your professional identity develops as you're going throughout the internship, how to manage challenges related to the experience. All of that is part of the course. So um, I encourage you, if you're interested in to uh, consider pursuing it for Psych 3D9 credit. As we get to the end here so that we can open it up to questions, I think, again, another major takeaway from this session, if you don't remember anything, is the three Ps for successfully landing an internship. It requires patience, persistence, and perseverance. The patience part is going to mean it can take a while for you to actually land that dream internship that you've been looking for. Persistence means we might have to send a follow-up email to an organization. They might not respond at first, or maybe we take a different strategic approach to it. And perseverance, meaning that we might get some no's. So we might have an organization that says, you know, no, we're not looking for any interns this summer. Sorry, we can't help you. Contact us again in the fall or whatever. Um, and that can be tough to solve, especially for a young person. I put myself in your shoes many years ago. Um, I still don't like being told no, and but it is part of life. And so if you're told no, and you have no, you have to have grit, you have to have resilience and really bounce back from that setback and have perseverance. You say, you know what, I'm going to try, I'm going to email two more organizations on my list. I wanted to put in, um, well, for before I put in a plug, so what are your next steps after today? Your next steps are to commit one to two hours a week to your summer internship search consistently, one to two hours a week to your internship search. Um, week one might simply be, I'm going to look at the directory. I'm going to kind of look at the directory of organizations, see what might interest me. Week number two, you might say, okay, I'm going to have my resume reviewed by the Career Center. Week number three, you might say, you know what, I'm going to start composing some draft emails. I already have some organizations I want to target. I might also put my spreadsheet together week number three. So kind of, I already mentioned all of the other next steps on here already, already um, creating the spreadsheet for your search updating your resume, making sure your resume uh, is formatted properly. It looks professional, it's polished, it's using action verbs. You're using really catchy headers for to describe your experience rather than just kind of a generic work experience. Um, researching organizations to target. So when you find an organization you're really interested in, whether it's in the directory or elsewhere, you want to really start researching that organization. So you want to find out a little bit more the who, what, how, when, why of the organization. So finding a little bit about their mission. And so when you're sending that outreach email, which is the next step in conducting effective outreach to top organizations, you're going to be coming across as someone who's really done their homework, and saying, wow, this young person really researched us. This is a sign of somebody who's conscientious and, and highly ambitious. So keep putting those questions in the chat because we definitely will have some time to get to those in a second. Putting in a plug for our Psychology Career Exploration Night that's happening on March 8th. Yes, this will be in person. Um, we, we will be required to wear a mask. Um, we will be following all COVID protocols. It's going to be in the, the Colony Ballroom in the Stamp. Um, I really encourage all of you to come out to this because um, there I'm, I can guarantee you there are going to be probably some organizations looking for summer interns at this event. So definitely come out to it if you're able to. It's going to be Tuesday, March 8th from 6 to 8. You don't have to stay the whole time, of course. If you'd like to access the slides, the information that we covered today, you can go to the link that I'm showing here, the go umd.edu slash internship help, 
or you can access the QR. You can take a picture of the QR code there if you want uh, on your phone as well. I recommend um, if you need further assistance to schedule an appointment with me, I can really meet with you one-on-one -on -one and personalize your search for you. We can make it all about you and not anybody else. Um, and really kind of, um, usually the first meeting is again, uh, more introducing you to the resources, but you have a leg up on that already. So maybe our first meeting would be actually action where we're talking about, okay, what are some resources that you found to be helpful? Uh, or what are some organizations rather that you found interesting that you would love to intern at? And we can talk about those organizations a little bit. I can share with you uh, kind of our relationship with those organizations. Is it really strong? Has it maybe fizzled out because we haven't had a student there recently? Um, if you are out of state, um, I will mostly be helping you to find organizations back home this summer. So we'll be using uh, you. We'll be using things like you and I. Um, Indeed.com. We'll be using, uh, we'll be looking at uh, mental health services within your area, behavioral health systems within your area, uh, those kinds of things. Believe it or not, we do have a couple sites on the directory that are, say, from um, New York, uh, New York and New Jersey area, where I've had students intern in the summer. Um, so there are a few on there, but they're definitely not as many as there need to be on there. But so if you are out of state, we can help you, give you a little bit of a different approach where we'll be helping to identify potential um, sites to target based on kind of branches of psychology, like behavioral health, mental health, um, those kinds of things. All right, so with that being said, let's go to our chat box here. And yes, I will bring up the QR code here before we get to the other. I don't know, I'm kind of an ignoramus. Hopefully the QR code will work for you. I don't know if it will um, out of how I'm, how we're sharing things here and that. So we'll have to see if that, and uh, if that works for you. Um, and I've got the chat box blocking it now. So my apologies to you here. Um, I think I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Oh, it does work. Wonderful. Okay, awesome. Really proud of myself that I was able to figure that out this afternoon. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to stop sharing. Well, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep sharing um, for a second. We'll go to these questions, and you can keep them coming in the chat box. Um, one question was, is the slide go, slideshow going to be posted or sent to us? Yeah, we will try to send it to you all. We do have, if you registered um, through the Zoom, uh, we do have access to that. So we will try to get that sent out to you. That's a really good suggestion. And also probably post it on the blog. If you're familiar with the UMD site blog, we'll probably post it there as well. Uh, somebody else was asking, will the recording of this meeting and resources provided be posted? Yeah, again, um, we will try to post them all together, probably on the blog. I'm thinking uh, blog announcement. So if you're not subscribed to the blog, go ahead and do that, umdsite.blogspot.com, and you can follow it, um, literally follow it um, with follow it and get uh, daily updates. But we'll try to uh, make sure that we have all of the resources, the slides, the recording, and anything else kind of all in one place for you folks. Um, someone interested in gaining clinical and counseling experience, when would be the right time to apply to such organizations? I have applied to numerous places so far in this field. I've either gotten replies with due to COVID, we are not offering internships at this time, or we do not know the situation. Um, I'm going to first start by answering this question. Generally speaking, it doesn't really matter whether you're interested in clinical counseling type of internship, human resources, industrial organization psychology. It's never too early to start or too late to start, I guess, this is, is is the general answer to that question, but I will speak specifically to clinical counseling. So there are 
it, it does get tough with counseling practices. A lot of counseling practices will not want to take on an undergraduate intern because of the training regimen that's required for their internships, uh, interns rather, more has to be on the graduate level. However, there are a lot of great intake, what I call intake administration internships out there where you're working, say, in a private practice, you're learning about the business side to having your own private practice, you're learning about the work that a psychologist does or a psychotherapist performs. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be able to sit in on sessions, but you do still learn a lot about some of the different disorders that are out there. So one thing that is common for students um, with internships in clinical settings is they'll say to me, uh, Steve, I didn't realize that psychologists didn't specialize in everything, you know. So as you probably are learning from your classes, clinical psychologists, uh, as an example, don't specialize in all of the disorders. If you took um, when I was in school, we called it abnormal psychology. I called it the diagnosing your friends course um, or, or the med student syndrome, where I started to think I had all of the emotional <laughs> mental disorders. Um, you know, you're probably finding that course to be really interesting if you're interested in clinical psychology 353 course. Um, so you might want to set, you want to find out, you know, what does the practice specialize in those kinds of things? Um, but those do get a little tough. I would say if you're interested in clinical psych or any kind of therapeutic type of, of internship, you may want to stick with um, places like Cornerstone Montgomery, psychiatric rehabilitation settings, that there's where you will be able to have contact with clients because um, it's not, you'll get trained in HIPAA and all of that, but it isn't the client, um, how do I say, a privilege in that regard. It's not a private practice that's one-on-one. -on -one. So in a lot of those instances, you're doing a lot of group facilitation work with clients. So you still will get a really deep understanding of um, what, it's, what it's like to be a practitioner or a clinician. Um, we covered the QR code. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I remember that. Um, Kurt's psychology. I was wondering what happened with that. Um, it sounds like you did actually do that experience. I never heard back from you on that. So happy that you were able to have that experience. By the way, Kurt's psychology is really good to UMD graduates. Um, I did recommend someone else um, there. And um, that's one of the advantages, I, th I think, too, to meeting with me one on one because if I know what your needs are um, and your interests are and how you're looking to grow and develop, we can sometimes get you introduced to the organization. I believe, Alex, we did that for you, that we um, sent an introductory email and they responded right away, not too long after that. So um, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to um, helping you get introduced to organizations that we already have a partner partnership with. The only thing I would say to that is, um, I've gotten burned a little bit in the past with that. So we need to make sure that you're following through with the organization. So if they respond to you, you got to respond. Um, and it's okay if you find another experience. It's just that we want to make sure that um, you are responding to them. Thank you for sharing that, Alex. That is wonderful. Um, did we get all the questions? Anybody else can just shout out your question if you have it. All right. Well, I think we got all of the questions. So um, please feel free to reach out to me at, at your convenience. My email address is syoung17 at umd.edu if I can be of further assistance to you in your summer internship search. So we thank you again for making time for us this evening and for participating in this internship workshop. We may be sending you an evaluation to complete on it. So keep an eye out for that as well within the upcoming days. So thank you again and everyone uh, have a great evening. Take care. Thank you. Um, sorry.